Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege it is to try to help people with your word and with truth. And as we look at this second session here on the subject of spiritual warfare and it's all in the head, I pray this, this session is so important. It's so vitally important in a day and hour when on every hand we have men of God and, and deacons and Sunday school teachers and many of your children, teenagers, being caught up and destroyed in their minds by the images that they're taking in. I pray right now, Father, that you would speak to our hearts and equip us to fight the good fight uh, as we deal with this subject of casting down imaginations. And we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we look at this subject tonight, uh, the scriptures that we've been using in this session is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The last session we talked about casting down or pulling down strongholds. We identified that a stronghold is a lie, a lie that a uh, person believes is true. And Satan lies to us about what? Remember what I said, he'll lie to you about God, he'll lie to you about others, he'll lie to you about yourself. And he attacks you in your mind. And he'll attack you because he knows if your thinking's wrong, and what goes on in your mind will affect your emotions. And what goes on in your emotions will determine how you act. This session, as we take it further, is dealing with the subject of casting down imaginations. And as we deal with this, this subject here, let's look at the definition of imaginations. Imaginations come from an inventory of images that are stored up in the mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And these images in his heart, are in, his, in, his, in his mind, have entered his mind through the eye gate, can create fantasies and a false reality. There are a lot of people that allow images to come in their mind, and they don't deal with those, those images properly, and therefore it creates fantasies and a false reality. And we want to deal with those imaginations. God knew that you and I would be in a world that has m images. And uh, these images, if not dealt with properly, will literally destroy us. Uh, images from where? Images through magazines. Uh, we can see images on the front of magazines. I, I often uh, warn people, you know, as we uh, live in a day of printed materials and images and as we're going out that, that uh, Walmart checkout line right there and we see those images in those magazines, it, it's so important and vitally important that you and I learn that we're not to put our eyes on those images. I, I fly nearly 100,000 miles a year on airplanes. I go through airports and I see magazines and things. I've had to learn that those images can literally destroy me and I'm, I've got to learn not to allow my eyes to go to those images through magazines and through memories, images from our memories. The Bible says these images need to be cast down. Uh, images through pornography, um, either pornography through the internet, which uh, is access of internet everywhere, and internet pornography is relevant, and pornography in movies, images, bad movie, uh, images through movies, uh, images through videos that we might watch, or images through billboards that we see on the highway. And most of us don't realize that many of these images are, uh, that we allow to come in through the eye gate, and, we don't, and they're improper images, and, and when we don't deal with them and take care of them, those images uh, will destroy our mind and affect our emotions. And then images through video games. We're living in a, in a world that when, when I was, um, uh, had my son growing up, video games came out. Um, uh, you know, you would recognize this video game that him and I used to play. It would, it would here's the sound and the way it, way it was, it would go, waka, 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 waka. And they'd go bloop, 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 bloop. And you recognize that as Pac-Man or, Pac, or Miss Pac-Man. We used to play that all the time. And it was interesting enough, when we played that, I, I wasn't very good at it, and therefore it never interests me too much. But um, 
uh, when we would play that for hours, an hour, an hour or so, and then we'd go to bed at night. You know what I saw in my mind? I saw those images of that Pac-Man in, in my mind when I closed my eyes. And can you imagine what goes on in the minds of young people today when they have video games that kill people, that shoot people, that, that can uh, fight people, can shoot dogs, there's blood, there's, there's murder, there's even um, sensual activity now in video games. And those images are destroying the minds of young people. And those images from movies and, and all of those, uh, that, that internet pornography, it destroys the minds of God's people. And, and we're living in a day where in God, in the church of the living God, we have, we have people that are struggling with their minds over images as they, as they have allowed these images to come through the eye gate. And they're stored up in the mind now. And notice on the screen, it talks about creating a private world. There are a lot of people creating a private world in their own mind through video games. Uh, maybe, and these video games are so real. And so anything that you could, in your own mind, create or fathom, or, uh, to, uh, anything that you could do physically, you can get a video game now and, and do that with a video game. And you got to understand something. What, what a terrible, terrible tool it's become in the minds of a lot of young people. I've, I, of course, we have a home for boys and girls, and working with them, many of them will tell me that sometimes those images of immorality in those video games still haunt them. And those images through pornography, as I talk to people around the country, still troubling them. I want to deal with casting down those imaginations. And if we're going to do that, we're going to have to learn to guard our minds if we're going to save our hearts. The Bible tells us in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 51, it says, mine eye affecteth my heart. In other words, what you allow to go through the eye gate is going to affect your heart. It doesn't matter what you think about it. That's what God's word says is going to happen. Look at this study on the word imaginations. And let's learn a few things as we look at it. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And neither were thankful, but they, look what it says, became vain in what? In their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. And when I, when, I, when I read that, God spoke to me when he said their foolish heart was darkened. And, and what it spoke to me was a heart with evil images will soon become shadowed over and darkened. Look what it says, vain in their imaginations, vain in images, and their foolish heart was darkened. It was just a few months ago, and I, I, I would guess somewhere around eight or nine months ago, maybe not quite that many, but somewhere close to that, uh, I was talking to a, a doctor, and he said that they can take a, a, a CAT scan or a brain scan, and they can, uh, they can tell if a man has been looking at a lot of pornography, heavy doses of pornography, because on the front of their brain, it will show up a shadow, a dark shadow on the front of their brain. Now, isn't it interesting that God's Word already says, tells us that when we become vain in these images, that our foolish heart will become darkened? And God's Word, many of God's children, many of God's children can't figure out why their spiritual life, their spiritual heart seems to be darker. And the brightness and the illumination of God in their life has become overshadowed. It's probably because of these images that they're allowing to be in their minds. Look what 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9 says. It says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Now the mind is so important. He says, For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth, what does it say? All the imaginations of the thoughts. And so God, what's God saying to us? In other words, God searches and understands, and he knows every image in your thought life. And that's, you say, preacher, that's a terrible thing. Not if you're living right, if you'll learn to guard your mind to save your heart. It's a good thing that God knows what goes on in our minds, our, our hearts. Here's what Proverbs says in verse 16 through 18. These six things, notice it says, doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Watch this, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. 
In other words, God's feelings are very strong against these images and those that devise wicked imaginations. You, you've got to imagine what, what God's feelings are toward like Hugh Hefner or these people that have these pornography magazines that they produce those and they create, they devise wicked images for people to look at. And God in heaven has strong. He says, I hate these th this thing. I hate this activity. But listen to what I'm going to say to you. You that are looking at that, maybe through the internet pornography or maybe through some other way, through movies or whatever, did you know that once you allow those wicked images that, that into your mind, that your mind will now begin to devise wicked imaginations? I'm just simply saying to you this, is, is God hates it when we allow our heart to devise these wicked images. Look what Genesis 6, 5 says. It says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only, what does it say, evil continually. And when I read that, I thought, you know, God, what are you saying there? And God spoke to me and said, you know, these immoral images will cause your heart to become evil continually. God saw the wickedness of man. He said that every imagination of the heart, of the thoughts of his heart are only evil continually. I know people today that struggle. It's constantly battling these images continually in their hearts. And Genesis 8, 21 says, Then the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Look what it says. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Now let me say this to you. When I read that, God spoke to my heart and said, you know what? Our hearts are naturally evil. We do not need to feed it with more evil images. He says our heart is evil from our youth. As young men, young children, our hearts are already evil. And so what I'm saying to you, listen, you, you think you can handle it, but you can't handle it, feeding your, your mind with these images. In Deuteronomy 29, verse 19, look what it says, And it came to pass, and it come to pass, that when he heareth the words of this curse, that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, watch this, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imaginations of my heart. This is a major deception of the enemy. And that is to convince us that we can have peace have peace with these immoral images in our heart. I've talked to men before. They say, oh, preacher, it doesn't bother me. That's not true. It does bother men. It does bother women. It does bother them. I was just talking just, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, just a couple days ago to a man. And, and he came to me and said, you constantly talk about women looking at pornography, or men looking at pornography, and they're destroying their marriages through that pornography. And he said, you need to really talk to the women also. He said, because you know what? My son's wife got hooked on internet pornography and she has left him. And uh, she wants to live an immoral lifestyle. Destroyed their family. Listen to what I'm saying to you. You cannot have peace. Do not, do not deceive yourself in thinking, as the Bible says, that this person, he blessed himself in his heart. He says, I'm going to have peace, though I walk in the imaginations of my heart. You cannot do it. Look what Jeremiah 7, 24 says. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart. And what? And went backward and not forward. Now look what it says. We will walk in the counsels of our imaginations. Now let me say this to you. Did you know that those images come into your mind, into your mind, those images, that those images are giving you poor counsel, poor counsel. And the Bible says in those scriptures, right, that but walk in the counsels and in the imagination of the evil heart. And then it says in, uh, there that they went back or not forward. In other words, these immoral images will hinder us from moving forward spiritually, causing us to backslide to where we cannot move forward even if we want to. I know people today. I know people today. I'm talking about in independent, fundamental, Baptist churches, soul winners. They sing in the choir. They teach Sunday school classes. They sing special music. They're maybe deacons, whatever. Here's what I'm saying to you. In their heart of hearts, they really, really, really want to go forward with God, but they cannot seem to figure out why they can't go forward with the Lord. And they keep finding themselves going backwards instead of forward. It can, could it be that they've allowed a lot of images into their hearts and they're not willing to deal with those? Look what Jeremiah 16, 12 says. And ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that ye may not hearken unto me. 
Notice it says they walk after the imagination of the heart. You will walk after the imagination of your evil heart. But not only that, it says, but they may not hearken unto me, means this, you may hear God, but you will not be able to hearken to his voice. You see, hearkening and hearing are two separate things. We had a young boy that was raised in our neighborhood where I was raising my children in Missouri before I came to Iowa. And the boy's name was Chip. I don't know if it was his real name or his nickname, but they called him Chip. And my son and him would play in the sandbox there in the yard that we had built for them. And, and uh, Marvin and Chip would be in that, that um, uh, uh, out there in the sandbox in the yard playing. And his mother would yell out the back door and she would simply say something like, Chip, Chip. And uh, Chip would just keep playing. And my son would say, hey, Chip, your mom's calling you. And he would say, you know, yeah, I know that. I know my mom's calling me. And uh, my son said, well, then you ought to go. And he said, no, not yet. And then his mom would say, Chip Howard. And when his mom said Chip Howard, he got up, grabbed his toys, and went home. Because his mom had conditioned him that, you know what, Chip is not enough. It's Chip Howard. And when you say Chip Howard, you're in trouble. You know what he was doing? He could hear his mom, but he was not hearkening to his mother. And you know what happens to a lot of God's people? They'll come up to the preacher and say, great message. Boy, that's good. This is what I got out of the word of God. But you know what they can't do? They can't hearken to the voice of God anymore. They might even come forward in an invitation. And they might bow down and say, God, I'm going to do this. But they can't seem to hearken and do it anymore. They're defeated because of the evil imaginations of their heart. Look what Jeremiah 18, 12 says. And they said, there's no hope. But we will walk after our own look, look, devices, and we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. In other words, did you know what that's telling you? That's telling you that the images of a man's heart will dictate his actions. Look what it says. It says, but we will walk after our devices, and we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. Did you know that if you allow the wrong images to come in, and what's going to sooner or later going to happen is you, those images will dictate your actions. I've had people come to me and they said things like this. They'll say, you know, Pastor Smith, I never planned on doing this. I never planned on finding myself in an immoral relationship. I never planned on finding myself in an adulterous relationship. I never planned on committing fornication. Or I never planned on, on, on becoming this type of thing. But what happens is... When we allow these images to come into our minds, the Bible says sooner or later, everyone will do the imaginations of his evil heart. In other words, really, did you know that you, if you keep letting those images come in, you will not have a choice in the matter anymore. The images will rule you. Look what Jeremiah 23, 16, 17 here says. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophet that prophesy unto you, that make you vain, they speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, watch what they said, they said, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say, every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Now folks, listen to me. God's speaking to us here about images all through the scriptures. Some literally, literally deceive themselves into thinking that they can have peace inside while they walk in the images of their mind. These preachers there in Jeremiah were preaching a false word. It was not a word from the Lord. And they were telling those people that, you know what? The Lord told us that you can have peace and you can walk in the images of your own heart and no evil is going to come upon you. Can I tell you something? That is a lie. And did you know that that's being promoted in many churches? That you know what? It doesn't matter if you watch R-rated movies. That's all. You can go to the theaters and you can do whatever you want. Those images are going to destroy you sooner or later. No, they said no evil should come upon you. That's not true. And then uh, I was going to say to you, my heart aches. It literally aches from the assault that this movement of images has committed against the very foundation of our marriages. I'm talking about women finding their husbands on the internet looking at immoral images. I'm not talking just about the laymen. I'm talking about pastors and evangelists and deacons. I'm talking about staff members. I'm talking about men in their church offices. I'm talking about men in their business and they're being discovered and it's destroying the very foundation of their marriages. I'm going to tell you something. 
There's nothing like destroying what we call the trust of a marriage. Nothing. You, you do something to cast a shadow on the, on the, on the trust in the heart of your wife. You, you, she, did, in her mind, may not trust you. I want to say something to you. That's one of the hardest things to regain is trust. It's so disrespectful for a man to find himself caught in such a position that his wife would see that. It causes such a lack of trust in that marriage. Did you know that trust is the glue? It's the glue that holds my marriage together. And I'm not proud. I'm not, I mean this. I don't have my act together. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I want to tell you something. I'm away from my wife close to 100 nights out of a year. And I get on an airplane. I fly somewhere. She's not with me. I go through airports. I'm in, in, uh, in uh, uh, motel rooms, and I'm out, and I'm about, and I'm, I'm in different states and even other countries preaching and speaking, and, and she's not able to be with me. Can I tell you something? That the thing that keeps our marriage right is she has a trust in me, and I have a trust in her. But I guarantee you this, let her discover that I've been on the internet pornography or let her discover that I'm looking at some, some way, some type of pornography, it'll destroy the trust in our marriage. Satan has come to kill and to steal and to destroy and he'll use imaginations to destroy your marriage. Our churches are being embarrassed by the satanic attack. A, a week seldom goes by without a call from a pastor whose ministry has not been broadsided or nearly destroyed by the central spirit. Everywhere I go, people call me up and they'll say things like, Preacher, we got a problem in the church and this man got, uh, he molested this child or did this to this person or did that. And, and I'll, when I meet with those people, they'll always, I'll always trace it back to them giving place to images in their mind through pornography or some type of activity of videos or something like that. Can I tell you something tonight? This ought not to be so in God's church. This ought not to be named among us. This is hard to believe. According to Romans 1, we know the Bible speaks about those that are homosexuals. And some people who were literally independent, fundamental Baptist people are now professing homosexuals. I'm talking about, I'm dealing with four, maybe five cases I, uh, that are homosexuals. Now, I will say this before I go any further, and that's, this is the God's truth. And that is this. God doesn't make anybody a homosexual. Therefore, if God doesn't make them a homosexual, did you know that there's no such thing as a homosexual? It's a person that's been deceived into thinking what Satan says about them. And I'm talking about, I, I know of, of pastors... I know of Sunday school teachers. I know of young people that have gone through Christian schools, independent Baptist Christian schools, and, and I know of young ladies and young men that have been raised fundamental Baptists, and now they're in homosexual lifestyles. I'm not kicking them. I think we ought to reach them for Christ. I think somebody ought to have a ministry to reach these dear people that need the Lord. But I'm also saying to you is this is that when you allow images to come into your mind and you watch some immoral act on some image, that Im those images will lead you to go to other levels of immorality. These images, they control us. They control our minds. Remember as we've been quoting that verse, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And when we do these, these, this activity of immorality with our minds, with images, the pure lordship of Jesus Christ is assaulted through the defeated minds of God's children. And the authority and the confidence to be able to speak and the power of the Holy Ghost is weakened every time we give in to opening the doors of the central images. I'm, ta I'm ta talking about, about men who, maybe pastors who, <clears throat> they... Um, they're getting ready for the Sunday message on Saturday night, and they go on the internet to look up something. And they find themselves finding a pop-up here, and they follow that, trace that down to some immorality. Can I tell you that man, when he stands in his pulpit that Sunday morning, after seeing that on Saturday night, has lost a great deal of authority and confidence to be able to speak in the power of the Holy Ghost? And you might say, I don't have any respect for a pastor that would do something like that. How many Sunday school teachers do it? How many bus workers do it? How many people stay up late watching something on HBO and they let some images in their mind? Did you know the Holy Ghost of God will not anoint a life to do that? If you allow that those practice sooner or later, you'll lose the authority and confidence to speak. 
Let me say this to you also. For the fathers or the mothers that involve themselves in this type of activity, you will lose the authority and confidence to lead your children spiritually. You said, well, my son doesn't know I'm even doing that. Can I tell you something? Have you ever noticed that when you're involved in that, your children won't listen to you? It's because authority comes from God. It's a spiritual thing that God gives a dad, and God gives a pastor, God gives a mother. And when you're not living right, your children can, they cannot hear that authority, that God-given authority through you. And, they, and, and you lose that confidence to be able to lead them spiritually. And then, my friend, our children are wondering why mom and dad are fighting over the Internet. They can't figure out why there's so much turmoil in their home. Mom's saying, why, why do you look at that? And they, they're trying to figure out why they're arguing about that. They, they've seen daddy on the Internet, and they picked up on the images that their parents are watching on television. Let me say this to you, and listen carefully. I believe with all my heart that whatever you allow yourself to watch, then it ought to be, able to be something your children could watch. In other words, this, if a 12-year-old cannot watch it, a 52-year-old shouldn't be able to watch it. There's no such thing as adult movies or adult entertainment. It's just ungodly. And we need to, many, many people lie to themselves. I'm saying lie to the Holy Ghost in their heart because they want to see these images. They become addicted to them. And I'm, I'm here to fight that as much as I can. I want you to wake up to some, some facts. Listen carefully. Every day, 5,000 new porno pop-ups are put on the Internet. That's every day in, a, in the world, 5,000 new porno pop-ups. You say, what does that mean? That means 35,000 per week are put on the Internet every week. Porno pop-ups. You know, that brings 1.8 million per year. Almost 2 million porno pop-ups are put on the Internet every year. <clears throat> and after many, many years, two, two or more decades of this going on, you can see how many millions of, uh, of internet pop-ups, porno pop-ups are put on there. And there's more staggering than that is there are 420 million porno web pages now on the internet. Now, I'm not talking about pop-ups. I'm talking about porno web pages. So what does that mean? That means we now have at least one porno web page per American. That means if everybody in America would want to have their own assigned porno web page, every child, every adult could have their own porno web page. I want you to think about that tonight. One of every five children who have access to the Internet will be sexually solicited by someone they do not know by the time that they are eight years old. Do you understand what that means? That means 20 out of 100 children by the time they are eight years old will be someone will invite them to have sex with them through the Internet, and they may not even know that person. And then that, this is staggering. Five out of ten men in the church pews are viewing pornography on a consistent basis. Let me say this to you. By the time a pastor gets up to his pulpit from Sunday to Sunday, if a man only comes once in a while, once on Sunday morning, do you realize, pastor, your job is bigger and it's, it's almost impossible to affect that man because he's a man in your church. If, the, if it's true. Now, someone said to me, do you really think fundamental Baptists are, are five out of ten are looking? Let me tell you something. Uh, we need to get our head out of the sand and realize our movement has problems just like everybody else's movement has problems. <coughs> Six out of ten pastors missionaries and evangelists that we counsel at Harvest Baptist Counseling Center seek for deliverance from the internet pornography. Six out of ten. Someone calls me up and says, look, I'm a pastor. I need some help. I, I can almost guarantee you six out of ten are men that are missionaries coming because they've got issues with the internet pornography. I don't know what that means to you, but it's staggering to me. When I think about the average age of first internet exposure to pornography is 11 years old in America. 11 years old. Can I tell you something? When I was 11 years old, I didn't know what pornography was. And there was no access to pornography for me. 90% of 9- to 16-year-olds have viewed online pornography. Now, think about this. Think about this. We got a great youth group at our church here. We got an incredible group. They love the Lord. They're excited. They're having fun. They're serving the Lord. 90% of 9- to 16-year-olds have viewed online pornography. 
The job of a teen youth director with teenagers is nearly impossible to be able to turn out. Who's going to pastor the next generation? Who's going to be the missionaries? Now, listen, it won't be these young people that have all these images in their mind. They won't be able to stand the warfare. 80% of 15 to 17-year-olds are involved in multiple hardcore exposure. 80% are involved in multiple hardcore exposure. I'm not talking about the little pictures. I'm talking about hardcore exposure of immorality. 15, 16, and 17-year-olds, 8 out of 10. There's an estimated 750,000 child predators on the Internet at any given time communicating through Facebook and other sites with young girls and boys. And let's think about that. Three quarters of a million child predators are on the internet at any given time of the day or night looking and searching. And these little boys and girls have access to the internet in their homes and at school. And you say, well, we got this filter system. Can I tell you something? I know of places that are training children right now how to sidestep filter systems because they believe that it's infringement on their rights. Every day, 200 new child pornography pictures are put on the internet every day. 200 little boys and girls who have no say-so in it, their picture of them with no clothes on, they are put on the internet every day. That's 73,000 of them per year. That's staggering to me. I don't know what it does to you. Now, let me, let me raise uh, an illustration to you here. Let's say that I was in your church I'm preaching a meeting there, and I've got, I, I, I carry a lot of books and CDs and training materials with me when I preach. And let's say I got up and I had a book about a foot thick, and that book about a foot thick, I said, I'm selling this book back here on my table. And back here on that table, you can get this book, and, and it's a book that you subscribe to, and every day in the mail, you're going to get uh, more information to put inside that book. You open the clip it open, you put your inserts, and, and you're going to get all the information you need about mechanics, about electronics, about computers, about travel, about any subject. You can get commentaries, Bible studies, you can get, uh, you can get anything you want on this, in this book. And we're going to update it every day. You're going to get updates to it. And you can sell stuff, and you can buy stuff through this. And you, you, it's an incredible book. For $49 a month, you can have that book in your house. But let's say this, that I'm trying to sell that, and you're thinking, well, that's a good deal. But I said to you, I'm selling this in your church. But i got to be honest with you, inside of that book, right smack in the middle of it, you open it up, there's a immoral images. There's picture. There's a picture of an immoral image of some lady. You know what every pastor should do? If I were trying to sell that in their church, they ought to get up and say, you can't sell that in my church, and they ought to kick me out of the church. But you know what? Wait a second. What about the Internet in most pastors' offices and youth directors' offices that are having 420 million porno web pages available and, and millions of porno pop-ups? I think what we've done is we've, we've bought into the lie and Satan sold us on it, thinking that we're going to build our churches on web pages and we're going to build our churches by marketing our churches. Can I tell you something? The New Testament church never had a web page and they didn't have the internet. And can I give you something to think about? They, they did a pretty good job building churches. <coughs> What we need to do is just get back to doing what the Bible says, the Bible methods, and that is, is preaching the Word of God in the fullness of the Holy Spirit through prayer and fasting and going out in the highways and hedges and telling people about Christ. And that'll build churches. Got a picture here. Of, this is really an outdated picture. I've got six grandkids. These are four of, my, of them. And, um, you know, I thank the world of my grandkids. I, I, I'm amazed how this is so outdated. Uh, time just flown by. But this activity of, of immoral images will destroy the minds of our future generations. And they will be defiled by the evil powers. And let me say this to you. I don't want these grandkids to be defiled by the evil powers of the immoral images. I don't want my grandkids to ever grow up and think, about Pawpaw. 
being some, have some type of perverted mind. I don't want them to ever hear grandma or their mother or their dad saying, Papa uh, got caught looking at something bad on the internet. These kids mean too much to me for that. I believe that these kids, Sarah Michelle, they're on the left, and Desiree, Andrea and Ethan, uh, Sarah Michelle, she's a, she's a wire. And um, the other day she walked in my office and I always had this uh, candy in there and, and all the kids in the church come to my office after church for candy and they got free reign to do that. And uh, Sarah Michelle came in there. It wasn't after church because my grandkids have access to my office pretty much all the time. She came in and she said, Papa, I'm standing by my door. She said, Papa, can I have some of that candy? I said, sure you can. And uh, she said, Papa, I really love you. And I thought, wow, that's neat. Go get your candy. She got the candy. When she came back by me, going out the door, she hit me and said, I was just kidding, and walked out the door. She's just kind of one of them kids. You never know what she's going to say. But she's, every Sunday, she crawls up in my lap, and she, she, she uh, gives me love on her. And then Desiree, uh, she's our drama queen. She's an incredible kid. And she, uh, she uh, the other night in church, you could hear her singing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, uh, over her grandma sitting there, and, and uh, people around her were looking at her. She didn't even know it. And then Andrea, she's one of the quiet kids. She just, uh, she's the oldest grandchild that I have. She's, she's now eight years old. She wasn't eight in that picture, but she's eight years old now, and, and uh, she's just an incredible kid. She, She's quiet. She thinks through things. Ethan, he's in his own world. He's, he's from, he may be from outer space. We're not sure. But what I'm saying to you is this. Each one of these kids, I think they deserve a holy grandpa, don't you? Don't you think your kids deserve a holy grandpa? Don't you think that we owe our children and our grandchildren a pure-minded dad, a pure-minded mom, a pure-minded grandpa, a pure-minded grandma? This is Andrea. There are times uh, when she'll spend the night with us on Thursday night. I'll travel on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, come home. Our midweek service is on Thursday night. And uh, she'll come to my house. And she's standing here right outside my office. And I asked her, how much do you love me? And she opened up her arms and said, I love you that much, Papa. And sometimes she'll come to our house on Thursday night. And on Friday morning, she'll get up and she'll come down and read her Bible with me. What am I, what's my point? Do I really want this little girl to ever wonder about what kind of guy I am? I don't think so. Let me give you another picture here. This is my wife, Alice. We've been married coming up in August will be 34 years. We were married on August 7th, 1976. Four o'clock at on East Springfield Road in St. Clair, Missouri, at First Baptist Church. She was 18, I was 19 when we got married. I believe she deserves my whole heart. I don't think she should ever have to wonder where my heart's at. What I'm saying in this session is this. These images, you look in that scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6, we see, the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. God wants you and I to guard our hearts, to guard our minds so we can save our hearts. And the images that you have allowed in your mind through the years, number one, let me say to you, first of all, eliminate any and all access to images that you have in your life. If you can, if you can, if you're looking at stuff on the internet, I'm saying get rid of the internet if you're looking at it. I'm saying to you that we don't have to have all that stuff to survive. But number two, let me say this, the images that are already in your mind, what are you going to do with those images? Here's, let me challenge you this way. Get alone with God. Get alone with God and bow your head with God. And maybe right there as I'm talking to you right now, as I lead people sometimes in my office, I'll just have them bow their head. And I'll tell them, they'll, they'll admit, they'll weep sometimes over the images in their mind. I've had men just hit their head with their hands and say, I'm tormented with these images. And what we do is we pray. We ask God to take his precious blood and begin to scrub every cracking corner of their minds. And we cast down those images. 
in prayer. In the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, we ask God to cleanse their minds. And as these images might pop up in their minds, we bring those images into captivity out of the obedience of Christ. We ask God to cleanse us of those images. And then we've got to take the word of God, and the Bible says about the washing of the water of the word, as we wash our minds with the word. Our minds, I believe, can become pure and clean and holy again. That woman on the screen there is my wife, and she deserves my whole heart. She deserves every, every piece of my heart. I don't want her to ever think that it's pieced out to other people. You know what? As we close this session, first session was on lies, strongholds, tearing them down, those lies. By how? By just establishing who we are in Christ and now imaginations. Destroy those imaginations. Ask God to cleanse your mind. Think on things above and not on things of this earth. Do as Colossians says. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Do what Philippians says. Think on these things. My challenge to you today is this. Is if you do not take care of this, Satan will destroy your life. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 through 6 is spiritual warfare. And it's all in our head. Lies, strongholds are in our minds. And where are images? They're in our minds.